Hey, what's up, family? This is the video I've been trying to lead everyone up to with the Flat Earth videos. Um, finally, I can do it, but we're going to have to move fast, so we're going to get straight to the point. Um, this video is primarily dealing with stars and what happens to us after we die, but we're going to move fast, and there's something I really want to cover, I want to deal with, before we get into that. So let's quickly get to it really quick. Here's Carl Sagan. Here's a map of ancient Egypt, I've inserted two sticks or obelisks, one up here in Alexandria and one down here in Syene. I wonder how he measured now, that. if at a certain moment each stick casts no shadow, right. no shadow at all, that's perfectly easy to understand, provided the earth is flat. If the shadow at Syene is at a certain length and the shadow at Alexandria is the same length, okay. that also makes sense on a flat earth. But how one experiment shouldn't be able to prove whether Earth is a ball or whether it's flat. You can't just go based on one experiment. How could it be, Eratosthenes asked, that at the same instant there was no shadow at Syene and a very substantial shadow at Alexandria? Okay. All right, let's finally go down here. Let's quickly move fast. All right, so I created this little image here. Um, here you have both obelisks, which Carl Sagan was talking about. The only problem with what Carl Sagan was, was saying is that, let's go up here. Now, we're going to look at from Aswan to Alexandria, right? And this is where the sun dot or the uh, obelisks, where they had different shadows, right? But here's the problem. The elevations at both areas are completely different. So... As you get up to the green area, that that's where it's, in here we have contour lines, but that's where you have lower elevations. The elevations are completely different. So if you're trying to measure the sun shadow at, uh, let's say, Alexandria, and then you're trying to measure the other one down at um, the other location, you're going to have two different uh, size shadows. That's just a fact. Okay, so what I did down here was I showed that the elevations are not the same, right? And here we're going to go to, um, well, let's, you know what, let's pull it up here. Let's get the uh, sun's location. Uh, let's go back here. Let's bring down the sun's location. Let's find out where, what the shadows would look like, okay? Because as you can see with the obelisk on the left-hand side, that one's a little bit, it's sitting on a higher um uh, Elevation. I create this little sphere here. I was kind of a little too lazy to sit there and draw up a mountain, but here we can look and see. Look at that. Sure, it's moving. You can see the different shadows, but one's at a higher elevation. So that's neither here nor there. And I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I want to get to the other stuff. All right, now uh, let's get past that. Now we're, we're going to get to the, the to the bottom line of this whole video. Which is stars, okay? We know this comes from National Geographic. Uh, the stars are, of course, um, photoshopped. I mean, we can safely say that. But even if they were real, you wouldn't be able to see the star at the core. You wouldn't be able to see the body, okay? You're, what you're seeing is a glare coming from the star, okay? So even though this is photoshopped, it still applies. You cannot see the actual body of the star. Okay, so now we see here, we know that stars are ubiquitous across all of the nation's flags. I mean, if you look at it, almost every flag, there's either a star or a sun on it. Okay, or an eagle, which represents um, something in Egypt, right? So all of these have different stars. We're going to kind of move past that. All right, and also the Egyptians, they believe that when they died, that they will go up to the... Uh, the uh, to the stars, which pre actually let's go down here. Let's take a quick look. All right, so now we have Orion's belt right up here, right? Now let's kind of move over here. Let's take a look. This is a uh, Giza, and what we have is if you notice, let's zoom in down here a little bit. You have these little passageways right, which it goes inside the uh, Great Pyramid. 
these passageways line up with the three stars. They call them the three kings. And they call them the three kings because that's where they believed they would go. Okay? And they were right. You do go up to the stars. Okay? And so does the minds. The minds believe that when you died, you would ascend to the heavens. In fact, we'll get a... I've created a little... Uh, I put this here. Little 3D uh, model thing. And now... You can see where, obviously, where they were trying to go down to the Duat, or the underworld, but up here you also see that they were trying, they had passageways that would lead them up to the heavens. Because where would these passageways lead? They, they're not windows, okay? They're, they're passages, so in, they will also have their tombs in here. So when they died, their spirit went up there. And I put this city over here because... You can see a separation in the cultures between the ancient Egyptians and the modern Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians are no longer around, okay? They no longer exist. Whoever built those pyramids are no longer there. So a lot of the information's lost, okay? And a lot of it's been tainted. Now, we're going to go down here to uh, the um, Stonehenge, okay? Stonehenge was, um, and this uh, monument here is in Ireland, another place where they thought they would ascend to the heavens, but because of time constraints, we're going to really deal with Stonehenge and the Tower of Babel. Stonehenge, some people say, there's a big mystery around that. I really don't know what's the basis behind Stonehenge, but the one thing I can tell you is that it's dealing something with the sun and the stars. I think most people know that, and they don't really know how it was built. Okay, moving past that, here's an obelisk. Okay, boom. The Tower of Babel, right? The Tower of Babel was a place where they were trying to build, just like the Egyptians were trying to build a, a passageway going down, the Tower of Babel, they were trying to build a monument, a structure that would lead them up into the stars. Okay, because that's where they literally are trying to go. They're not taught, there is no afterlife. There's no such thing as death, okay? The afterlife that they're talking about is you changing from a butterfly, from a caterpillar into a butterfly. You're actually going from this body, which has electricity in it, that's how we're able to move our hands, and we're that electricity is becoming a star because those stars are not that far away. They're living entities, they're energy, they're balls of energy, okay? And if you go outside and look at a star, you'll be able to see that they uh, emit different colors, okay? Um, but as far as what NASA's telling us, complete bullshit, okay? So the Tower of Babel, they're trying to lead up, and they're trying to actually go somewhere, okay? So um, you guys can do your own research on that. Uh, but let's get back to this, right, because we got to move fast. All right, so now here's this little boy here. He's trying to figure out <laughs> how can you have an up or down on a ball, okay? You can't have an up or down on a ball, okay? You can have an up or down on a flat surface, but not a ball, okay? Because if the ball is floating in the middle of space, okay, there is no up or down, okay? It's all relative. There's no up or down. So let's move past that, okay? So in the Bible... In all ancient texts, it's not just the Bible, but let's read here. The universe of the ancient Israelites was made up of a flat, disc-shaped earth floating on water, okay? And I'm going to make a video dealing with Pangea. You can't have Pangea on a globe, but that's a whole other story. That's for another video. Heaven above, the underworld below. Humans inhabited earth during life in the underworld after death, and the underworld was morally neutral. Okay, only in the Hellenistic times after 330 BCE did the Jews begin to adopt the Greek idea that it would be a place of punishment for misdeeds and that the righteous would enjoy an afterlife in heaven. See, this is where things started getting messed up. In this period, to the older three level cosmology was widely replaced by the Greeks' concept of a spherical earth suspended in space at the center of a number of concentric heaven. So this is why I look back to the ancients, because the ancients was much smarter than we are today. I'm sorry to tell you that. That is true. So <laughs> 
you can clearly see right here, this is where, when they went to Spherical Earth, that's when everything went downhill. Okay, but that's for another video. Now, we know up on a graph is positive, down is negative. Okay, so now let's see what magnets are because the sun and the moon, if you're looking at a clock on a wall, the sun would be, let's say, the hour hand and the hour dial and the moon would be the minute dial. Okay, so they circle around on that flat disk. Now, let's take a look here what happens with magnets when you apply heat to them because everything in um, that exists has to do with heat because when you go down, it gets hot. When you go up, it gets cold. All right, so let's look. The Curie point of a magnet is the temperature at which it is no longer magnetic. They're applying the heat, heat to this. The heating process actually took about a minute before the magnet fell off. Okay. Boom. All right. So heat applied to mag heat temperature affects magnetism, but we're gonna go back to that now. Wait. Uh, what does gravity? What does the word? grave come from, right? Because when you say we're going to put somebody in the grave, right, it deals with gravity. Okay, see gravity over here? So gravity brings you down. Gravity is the force that brings your electrical energy down. Anti-gravity brings your energy up, okay? And I just may use that word anti-gravity for now. Now, your brain waves has electricity in it, right? It has positive ions. God, I'm running out of time here. Okay. Um, here you can see disabled people. They can pick up the brain waves from the disabled people and transmit it onto a computer because you have brain waves. Those brain waves, electricity doesn't, supposedly, according to Einstein, is never destroyed nor created. All right. Electromagnetic energy, a form of energy as reflected or emitted from objects in the form of electric and magnetic waves that can travel through space. So your brain waves can travel through space. Those are, the, are, are what the stars are. And again, all of this is going on in the book. It may not make sense now, but I'm trying. This is a crash course, and I'm trying to push it all through really quick. All right. Believe it or not, you can get your electricity from lemons. You can get your electricity from all plants. And that's why I tell people, eat plants, avoid dead animals, because that's death. You want to eat life, and you want to eat that electromagnetic energy Forget protein is important, but the electricity in the plants are even more important, and that comes from the sun because the sun is a ball of electricity, it's not a ball of fire. You can't have fire in space, that's a whole nother subject for another video. Okay, so moving on electrical signals, blah blah blah. Okay, so here they're talking about the Venus flytrap. How is the Venus flytrap able to respond so fast? There's electricity inside the plant. Okay, so if you stick your finger inside of a Venus flytrap. The, uh, here, you see, look at this. Let's really quick. Electrical charge required for closure of the Venus flytrap is three point. The ion channel blockers, blah, blah, blah. We're going to, it's a lot to read, but you can kind of read this yourself. Just remember this link and go read it. The elect, the Venus flytrap has electrical impulses in it. So plants have electricity in it. Okay. Now, uh, a lightning strike. Okay, let's read it. The precursor of any lightning strike is polarization of a positive and negative charge within a storm cloud. The tops of the storm clouds are known to acquire excess positive charge, and the bottom of the storm clouds acquire an excess of negative charge. Positive going up, negative going down. Lightning brings goes downward, okay, and that's how I believe a lot of life was created, but that's another story. Here goes heavens. They always depict heavens as above the clouds, going towards the stars. The, here you go again. Um, perfect example. Okay, so now, how do you get there? You have a positive mindset. You do what you love. Art, everything is art. Your cell phone is art. Everything is computer programs. Everything is, is a form of art. Do what you love. Everything that comes out of the wound has a, um, a purpose, okay? So do what you love and have a positive mind. You will reach those stars and you will become a star, okay? How are the stars fixed? I'm going to deal with all of that in the book. I may make a part two of this video, but I'm running out of time. Um, so watch this video a few times. Slow it down. Try to go over it. But I hope that um, I, I, I put some of the message through, okay? All right. Peace, blessings, hotep, assalamu alaikum, um, shalom, whatever. All right. Peace.